The Wednesday Week is sponsored by the Riverside Cafe, new outside bar, now open on match days. Welcome to the Wednesday week, the Sheffield Wednesday podcast. I'm James. We have, well, somewhat depleted numbers where, um, well, a couple down. Must be the aftermath of Valentine's Day. Uh, but we have got Dan Fudge with us. Evening, Dan. Good evening, sir. It sounds weird starting a, uh, a podcast without hearing. And with us on the line, we've got Mr. Marriott. I, f- I feel like it's odd. I feel like he's missed it. Do you want me, do to, do, what I mean? do you want me to try and do it in the, in the same high pitch manner? Johnny's on the line. We have got Fagino. <laughs> yeah. I thought, I thought I'd get that in. <laughs> and we've got Mr. Eddie, old boy. How the devil are you? Oh, you know what? <laughs> yes. 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 It's finally time. It is finally time. I've, been, I've trailed this a little bit on Twitter, on Instagram, on the socials. People know. People know what I'm here to talk about today. <laughs> you know what? Jack Hunt putting in an amazing performance <laughs> on Tuesday night, and we'll discuss that in great length. <laughs> uh, well, let's get down to business. Let's talk football um, because, well, two games since we last talked, and six points, two victories, five points, uh, sorry, five goals scored. But, um, well, if some of the fan base is to be believed, it's been a disastrous week. Let's talk about Birmingham first. It was a 3-0 win. Did that scoreline flatter us a bit? Uh, all right. The first six minutes, I remember thinking, we're going to spank these. I mean, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, you know what I mean? We're, we're looking incredible. But then after uh, Jordan's goal, I feel that we kind of went off the boil a bit. Did anybody else think, that? hang on, we're going to naff this up? This is going to fall apart because it's it, and I think well, you know one of my um, big complaints over the last few weeks is going a goal up and then doing what I call Stuart Gray in it, where we go, yeah, that's us, that's enough, just <laughs> La- one goal. Last goal's few fine. weeks, Fudge, last <laughs> last few decades that has yeah. been when the entire mo. <laughs> we just we just Stuart Gray it and uh, and I thought that's what we we're going to do. However, something happened at half time and we went. No, I sod this. We're going to have this. We're, we're, we're having it. And then we, uh, even though they hit the beans like three times in that 40 minute period in, in the first half, they um, they didn't seem to capitalise on anything. And then in the second half, we made them look really poor. Um, I, I'm not chuntering, I think, but I think Birmingham had a opportunity to get something from that game in the first half and change the course of the second half, but they didn't take it. So we got three points. And did the scoreline flatter them? Maybe. I think they should have got one or two back. Maybe. Like I said, they hit the beans a fair bit. You know, they, they blew it though, didn't they? They had, they had their chance and we did. We did do typical Wednesday. We came out of the traps uh, you know, really hot and we had a good crowd, especially for Friday Night on Sky, a good crowd. We were quite noisy. Everything was set up. Confidence was high. Conditions were right. And we got that goal. And it, you know, it couldn't come at a better time. First 10 minutes. Couldn't come for a better person. Our new super, super, super sign-in. Um, everything's perfect. Everything goes really well. But then those doubts creep in. And that's the way that Wednesday do it. And you know what? Birmingham did have their chances. From probably 25 through to 45 minutes, they were the better team. Um, and they they created enough to come away saying, well, you know, we well, we hit the bar. We, you know, we hit the post. We, we, did, we did everything we should have done. Actually, no, they didn't. They, they didn't really dominate. They didn't really create an awful lot. They ended up, hitting the woodwork. And you know what they are? They're shots off target. They're not going in no matter what. So you can't really count them. Um, and then second half, we did something that, I, I you know, I, I think Wednesday have come out traditionally and given really good second half performances. But we've done it because we've identified, especially under Carlos, identified something that wasn't going right and we've made a tactical change. We've changed the personnel or we've changed the style of play and things have got better. Actually, Friday night was a funny one because... We didn't. We didn't change anything at half time. We didn't change the personnel. We didn't change our approach. We didn't change the way that we, we played the game. We just came out and did it better. And 
that second half was as good a performance as we've had this year, I would suggest. So, um, yeah, I think Birmingham, I don't think, I, I watched it with my brother-in-law, who's a Birmingham fan, um, and even he couldn't say he, they were hard done to. Was it a great performance? No. Was it a performance that was more than good enough to beat a team in free fall? Yes. We don't need to do any more than that. I think it's it's interesting with the players that we brought in, in in January that you know maybe this is the sort of Sheffield Wednesday that we're looking at now who we can we can go out against um, a team like Birmingham a, a game like that where it wasn't vintage Wednesday it wasn't amazing it wasn't terrible you know we we played some good stuff at, at times but we never really got going did we we never particularly kind of got we maybe got out of first gear but not much you know kind of higher up than um, and that and yet we can still ride out. 3-0 winners because we've got players that can score goals when they get a chance now and on yeah. that subject uh, great to see Jordan Rhodes get his first goal and what a special moment the way that he celebrated with his dad that was that was brilliant wasn't it, it was so emotional and it it makes me wonder you know deep, kind of deep down it really makes me wonder all along as Jordan Rhodes actually had this dream that he's talked about about turning out for Wednesday in the, the blue and not quite white stripes. Um, <laughs> I had exactly the same thing, Eddie. I think you're right. I, I really thought that as well. And the the you didn't get to see exactly what you know what was said between Jordan and Andy, but it was a really emotional moment. And in fact, both of the, you know Sam Winnell's goal was a really emotional moment as well. But both of those guys seem to be really, really genuine football fans as much as football players they understand what they're achieving they understand the gravity of what's going on and they understand the history of, of playing for a club like Sheffield Wednesday and it's um it, it was really quite moving in a funny way it meant something to those guys and uh yeah so I if a great start for us as fans actually I think it meant as much to Jordan Rhodes scoring that goal and to Sam Winnell when he scored his goal as it meant to any of us I think with uh, with Sam Winnell, he um, he was grafting hard. I mean, he was unlucky not to have two or three that day, and um, and I I, I like the look of him actually, and and I'm sure we'll get onto it. You know, having those two up front, especially given Birmingham as a springboard and Forest area where he fits into all this and that sort of thing. I'm sure we'll get there in a second. But I was chuffed for Sam Winnell, and and I, and I agree with you, Eddie. Like I said, I think um, that was quite an emotional moment, and uh, I think the best bit about it was was just as a camera tried to catch it. You just saw Gianfranco Zola just, just <laughs> yeah. there, just just having the worst day of his actual life. Just, just as as this beautiful moments taking place, there's Zola's face going. What am I doing here? I didn't even apply for this job. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Somebody just <laughs> rang me up and gave it me. Right. So, um, next thing to reflect on from the Birmingham game was, and I'm going to describe it as the highlight of Jack Hunt's career right there in front of us because that ball that he played in for Winall's goal that was something special wasn't it it was uh, it was absolutely sublime i uh, i think there was a few players there who gave a great account of themselves especially like we said after the um on the uh, in the second half after the after the talking to i um i i was genuinely overwhelmed i i, I like that we've that we've actually gave an account of ourselves on tv as well that we've the, the, there were other people sat there, like like me, who subscribed to Sky this this year and gone. I don't want to watch any of these games. <laughs> and then, as as we started doing okay, we seem to be on every week now on a Friday night, which is which is crap and good at the same time. But um, but yeah, it, it's it's nice that we, we're actually giving an account of ourselves and players like Hunt and that cross and that Edda and the way Winner worked genuinely excites me at the minute. I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. <laughs> Can't agree more. Um, and, and that ball is, have we had a better cross since Derby Day, March 2012? That was perfect. Uh, and you know what? what was even more impressive was the fact that it took that tiny little deflection, didn't it, off the defender's head. And Winnell still adjusted to that and got it into the back of the net. Oh, sublime. I've got one annoyance after the, um, after the Birmingham game. And bloody hell, he's going to stun a bloody rubbish in he's going to start rubbish. with it. Bloody no, you know what? I, I honestly think this is something that us three between us can do something about. We're in a good position to sort this out because I fail to believe that we bring in a player of the stature 
the quality, the indisputable championship brilliance that is Jordan Rhodes. And the best song that we can come up with is the one that we gave to Ryan Lowe and Reese McCabe. Is that genuinely, between the entire fan base that we've got, the best that we can do is we've got Jordan Rhodes, Jordan Rhodes, we've got Jordan Rhodes. Seriously? <laughs> um, well, this is an opportunity to be creative. We, I, th I feel, like, I feel, I feel a, comp a competition coming along here, actually. Do you know what I mean? It sounds like something that Blue Peter would do. So, what we've got here is, we've got a crap song for Jordan Rhodes. What I want you, and son a postcard, stick some sticky back plastic on it, get in touch, and see if we can come up with a better song for Jordan Rhodes and one we've rehashed before. But I think you're right, you know, chance of, chance of getting, um, are getting better, and uh, they're starting to use better songs. I mean, the Carlos had a dream one. Did we steal that from Everton? I'm impressed with that one. And um, and then there's uh, we're on our way that Derby uh, that Brighton have stole, and there's every other song that we've sang before that um, that Derby have stolen. So, <laughs> and, you know, and it's on a postcard, kids, get involved. Has anybody else got one? Has anybody got any suggestions? What about you, James? Uh, a song for Jordan Rhodes. Well, I, I mean, yeah. I know the, there's been various versions of it knocking around on Twitter for the last couple of weeks, but some kind of version of Country Roads would surely seem to to fit and make sense. Uh, it's played out, though, isn't it? We're, you know, we're, we're Sheffield Wednesday. We're the innovators. We're the originators. We're the people that Derby steal from. So... Come on, we've I, given know, him I, the I, same I, song that we gave to Stevie Chuff in May. What's original no, no, exactly, about no. that? Hey, I absolutely agree that that is diabolical and it's a placeholder at best, right? So, on behalf of all of the Wednesday Week's fan base, such as such as we have one, um, I think there's two words, challenge accepted. Next week, let's make it happen. Right, so this is open to everyone. Yeah. Via, via the medium of Twitter, uh, you have one week to come up with uh, a song for Jordan Rhodes that's, well, I mean, to be fair, any song for Jordan Rhodes is going to be better than what fans were singing on, uh, on Friday night. So... Um, Yes, challenge is a go-go. We, we need Annika Rice here, don't we, with a helicopter. That's what we need. <laughs> she'd, be, she'd be able to sort this one around, out for us. Flying around South Yorkshire in a jumpsuit saying, right, come on then, <laughs> tell us your song. And then getting off and flying around again with some middle-class, um, you know, systems analysis in the, in the corner on a map telling her where to go. Can you tell I've just watched The Crystal Maze? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to, there's, there's gonna there's gonna be an early leader for this, and I'm I'm calling him out right now because he's been uh, he's been very helpful with uh, with with other items on Twitter uh, today. That's Alex Bethel, who goes by uh, at in the woodshed. Um, he came up with possibly the filthiest rhyme um, for Vance and Sasso that uh, that anyone has had. So I'm pretty sure he's got some creative juices ready to flow. I'm really hoping he, that all of his creative juices aren't all over the duvet at the moment. But um, uh, yeah, if, if Alex, uh, I know you're listening, so get involved and come up with something for Jordan Rhodes, potentially less homoerotic, although that's not a, 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 a real bar. To uh, to us singing it, but but there you go. So um, so uh, you know, Alex will lead the way. I'm sure many of our uh, of our followers and uh, and fellow Wednesday fans will follow. Um, I'm going to give it a go as well. I'm going to take some time and try and come up with something that is innovative and original and worthy of our let's face it record signing. Yep. You know, if you can come up with um, something as special as you did for Samida last season, then surely Eddie, you can come up with something for Jordan Rhodes. Well, that's the best thing about that Samido song is that I came up with it entirely by myself and nobody else on our store <laughs> had any input <laughs> I put that on a record now. Ah, oh dear. Right, okay. So um, let's move on. Tuesday night was, of course, it was Valentine's night and a nice present for all of us, uh, beating Blackburn 2-1 at Hillsborough. And, um, yeah, I mean, a, a funny old game, you would have to say, because, um, a, a, again, one where you would say that Blackburn are going to feel pretty unlucky not to take something out of that game. Listen, I'm going to have to leave you two to talk about this one because, unfortunately... I was going to say I'm off, I was off sunning myself, but I wasn't. I was away in uh, Lisbon watching Benfica in the Champions League because, you know, I'm that cultured and I go and watch other levels of football and, and whatnot. So uh, I missed this completely. So uh, obviously whatever you guys have got to say on this game is gospel and I will uh, in no way research it afterwards. All right. Well, tell you what, Fudge, me and you, just stick yourselves on mute for probably out the next 45 minutes because I've got a feeling <laughs> that, uh, that Eddie's going to have something to say. 
Well, in fact, actually, what was that thing? Was it they used to do on Hallam FM where they used to have the sob story on a Sunday afternoon and they used to play some, <laughs> some piano music behind it? Have we got any of that ready? Uh, we'll, add it, we'll add it in post. Um, look, there's, there's only two words that we need to use to uh, talk about the Blackburn game, and that is, of course, Vincent and Sasso. Um, and you know what? I'm, I don't even want to talk about the goals because... The goals were well taken, and I'd expect that any professional footballer getting into that position with that marking and that quality of ball will dispatch both of those shots. Lovely, beautiful right foot, cultured right foot, and then a header. And they're fantastic. And you know what? Vincent himself, being a very modest, unassuming man who knows that he's beautiful, knows that he is potentially the... Uh, the best, most admirable, most intelligent, best smelling, uh, wonderful <laughs> player that Sheffield Wednesday have ever had. He doesn't need to celebrate. And that's why his celebrations were, you know, understated. Some people might say shit. Some people might say, what are you doing jogging on the spot for a bit, Vincent? Um, you know, he knows that he probably needs to, you know, work out a, an extra couple of calories to keep that ripped tight, firm body, exactly where it needs to be. <laughs> so, but, you know, people, they, they'll talk about the goals and that's not important, actually. What's important is that a year ago, Wednesday fans were starting to buy in to the glory of Anson Sasso. He was producing great performances at centre-back, along, uh, alongside Tom Leeds, for the most part. And people were saying, you know what? This, guy, this guy's a baller. This guy's a straight-up baller. He can play this game of football. It's not about looking good. He's just a beast, right? And then just as soon as that little flame had been ignited, it was extinguished for Vincent by the cruel irony of club captain Glenn Leuven's returning to, uh, to, to, to uh, team so, and to form. I'm sorry to break down what was a very good flow there, Eddie. Um I'm trying to recall this moment in our history where we were all starting to believe that Van Storm was a baller. I, I'm sat there going through the roller deck of performances in my mind. How uh, soon we forget. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you know what? And you could go back. I I don't want to make you look bad on this, Fudge, because I respect you. I like you. I regard you as a, a as a person that I met. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Vincent produced performances of rare quality this time last year in the coldest months of the year. This is a guy who grew up on the, the south coast, on the Mediterranean coast of France. He plied his trade at Braga in the Portuguese league. He's not used to doing it on a cold Tuesday night in Sheffield, but guess what? He does. He steps up. He has the ability to do it, and his nipples are firm as much as his body is. But that moment where people started to forget about Vincent Sasso. That just gave him the fire. That lit the fire under the man. Six long months later, finally, the fire is burning in the heart of every true Wednesday night because we've seen not only Vincent Sasso, the goal scorer, and let's be honest, he's a more natural goal scorer than Jordan Rhodes, Sam Winnell, <laughs> Stephen Fletcher, Gary Hooper, all put together. He's also the single most visionary, talented, unbelievably proficient in touch and vision and passing defender that possibly we've ever had. And I think now no Wednesday fan can deny that Vincent Sasso possibly now is the heir to Des Walker, the single best defender that we've ever had. <laughs> On the blue and white stripes, Vance, we thank you. Thank you for choosing Wednesday. You could be playing at any club in the world right now. I'm sure you've got offers from China to go for five, six hundred thousand pounds a week. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for showing the people of Sheffield a better way a better way to play football, a better way to live, a better way to groom. So, Vincent, uh... from the heart, merci, mon brave. C'est à vous, monsieur. C'est à vous. Wow. Mike so, um, that, so what that, happened? Did it did it go well then? Did it? <laughs> that that was a I... that was a beautiful speech, Eddie. But I do have two words that I have to use in in reply to that. Is is the first one utter? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. No. The uh, the first one is wolves, and the second one is away. Let's let's talk about wolves away for a bit, shall we? <laughs> he wasn't great. He wasn't great. Okay. No. So. Um, 
I mean, they were um, they were two pretty proficient finishers, weren't they? On um, on on Tuesday night. Do we reckon? I've got I've got a theory that at some point, while you know in his younger years, um, Sasso was you know learning his trade, and you know maybe uh, one of his coaches was trying to work out what his best position was, and it was kind of you know it was, they weren't quite sure whether or not to to mould him as a midfielder, or maybe maybe go for centre back, or maybe slightly further forward through uh, uh, the field. Um, someone decided that he should be a centre half and made probably the worst decision of their career because he's not a great defender. There's something in that kid. He's got something, but he's not a great defender. He 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 scares me every time the ball comes near him in defence. Bringing it out of defence, the guy's brilliant. Is he just Paul Warhurst Mark II? That's the question. Yeah, he's got, he's got that Paul Warhurst Magic Bugera. Um, even Emerson Tome, who, you know, I think we have real fond memories of Emerson Tome, but he was quite a, a sketchy defender in the way that he would take a touch at all times. He would never clear the ball out. He would take a touch and then clear the ball out. Um, yeah, he's he's in that mould. He's I, You know what? I think he is a, a really good, proficient defender. And, right, OK, um, scene, end of the, the Vansel Sasso loving, etc. I'm talking now... Uh, really seriously about his abilities as a footballer. Uh, I think the problem that we have as English fans is that we we instinctively lack confidence in defenders who put their foot on the ball and look to play it first as opposed to clear their lines first. And that's something we've always been taught as kids. And, and so it's difficult for us to un, to deprogram ourselves from that. Do I think Vincent Sasso is... The great, the great ball playing centre back. No, he's not. He's a a fairly proficient defender who gets by um, on good physical ability and a decent reading of the game. But he's not the the archetype for the way that we play centre back, and that's why he probably will lose his spot to Tom Lees when he comes back because it fits better with the way that we play the game. But over the last two games, Sasso has proved that he is completely comfortable with playing the way that we play and he can be trusted to to generally make the right decisions to prevent to be in the right positions and prevent chances from developing across those two matches i think he's close to being our man of the two matches which isn't even a thing but i think he's, he really has proven that he can do it and so big up Vasil sasso anyone that wants to have a go come at me <laughs> has anybody uh, has anybody seen the episode of Red Dwarf where um, the cat keeps saying, "So what is it?" and then Crichton goes in to explain in a wormhole, a, a, a time hole or whatever it is, and it starts playing over and over again. I'm going to do it again. So what happened in the game? How did it? <laughs> have 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 you, have you watched the highlights? I haven't. I haven't seen a damn thing. I only landed hours ago. So and okay. uh, you know. So I'm gonna. I'm, somebody's gonna have to e explain to me what I'm on. I, I will. I'll give you a brief rundown of what happened on Tuesday night. Uh, so in in uh, ignoring the goals, these are the things that happened. Uh, other than the uh, the ball hit in the back of the net, uh, Ross Wallace hit the bar from a very good free kick that probably deserved uh, better. Um, yeah. Start of the second half, a pretty incredible double save from. Kieran Westwood, uh, who I would have to say I think was my man of the match on Tuesday night. Um, sorry, Eddie, don't hate me for it, but uh, no, I, no, I agree, <laughs> absolutely agree. In in, in that <laughs> moment alone, <laughs> he um, he pulled off a a, a damn good uh, double save, particularly the second one where he came flying out of his goal to narrow the uh, the angle. I kind of feel I'm doing Lord Hillsborough's job here because he would want to talk about this for a good ten minutes because that was uh, that was some good goalkeeping from the lad. Yeah, Lord Lord Hillsborough's a big advocate of the uh, the goalkeeper union, isn't he? He, uh, yeah. So, uh, so he, hang on, Vincent Sasso. I, I saw this. I was on the um, I was on the stadium of the Estadio de Luz, and I'm thinking, how's the Wednesday getting on? And uh, also, I've got an app called SofaScore that pings through the the goals as they go in. And my my, my watch vibrated. I took a look, and uh, oh, Sasso's got one. And then he got another one, and I'm thinking, what's going on? This is this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. But he, <laughs> this app is broken. This is yeah, shit, this sofa score. Oh yeah, no, it's telling me wrong. Right. 
<laughs> yeah, is it is this like when is this like when Sky thought it was black the other week? You know what I mean? Is this is, is, is this what's gone off? Uh, Sky have you know Sofa Score has got their information off Sky and they've just seen a black fella score and, and you know it could have been Liam Palmer or something but or, or Samedo and they just written Vincent Sasso because they don't know it really is. You know what I mean? Um, but no, I, I, I thought I thought it was nuts. So so Sasso scored two and wasn't man of the match. <laughs> no, because it, 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 compared to the Birmingham game, it was actually a much closer game and it was much more edgy for us. And actually, Birmingham can't have any complaints for coming away with no points. I think Blackburn actually can because they gave as good as they got, didn't they, James? Yeah, and um, I mean, we've we've probably got to talk about the, the the two really controversial moments in the game now, which, Fudge, if you've not watched the highlights, then one of these probably won't mean a great deal to I've you. I've seen I've seen the push on the ref, uh, and I've All seen right. Lord Hillsborough tweeting pictures of a ball over the line, but yeah. it, it, it's very so, blurry and I've not seen anything else there. That was that was the first one, so Marvin Emner's, it was a cracking shot, it, it hits the underside of the bar, um, now where I sit, which is kind of towards the Leppings Lane end of the north stand, uh, as that ball bounced down, I just thought, oh hell, because that to me, that was miles over the line as, as I watched it live now my, my mates john and tom who sit either side of me both said that they didn't think it crossed the line but for me as i followed it with with my eyes and i've not got the greatest eyes in the world but it looked miles over the replay it depends how you look upon it i think the replay also suggests that it was miles over i mean that it was a goal wasn't it lads yeah i i could see it from and i'm much closer to the cop than you are it yeah you know, it was a goal it, you know, if we had that goal line technology we'd be talking about uh, you know a, a 2-2 draw in all uh, in all likelihood um but it, these things level out i'm not i'm not going to be triumphalist about it and i'm not going to equally i'm not going to complain when we are on the wrong end of that decision that's football it's the way that it happens uh, yeah it probably was but then uh, it was all ruined because uh, akpan hope akpan decided that what he was going to do was uh, do a really rubbish crime watch reconstruction of Paolo Di Canio's book <laughs> on Paul Alcott. And you know what? If you're going to try and improve on perfection, then you better bring it. And he didn't bring it. What he did was a really, really apologetic, uh, rubbish push uh, on the ref, who did who also didn't do Paul Alcock any, any favours at all. He was a disgrace to his profession <laughs> by not going down in as a comedic a fashion as his predecessor. I, um, I did see that. He, the, the, the way that he didn't uh, stumble backwards and backwards and do the longest comedy at Prattfall, a la Norman Wisdom, <laughs> that, uh, that Paul Alcock managed to, managed to nail out, is well, it's, it's yeah. just an embarrassment to his entire profession as far Absolutely. as I'm concerned. Absolutely. <laughs> he should be struck off, shouldn't he? He should be he, demoted he should. to League One. He should. Let, let, you know, Clatterberg can take him with him for wherever he's going. Um, and ironically, for uh, for Blackburn fans, it's been announced today that we are getting goal line technology <laughs> in the uh, in the league today, hasn't it? <laughs> so the, the the subsequent Twitter meltdown that we've seen in the aftermath of Tuesday, which I've got to hold my hands up. Normally, I stay off Twitter in the aftermath of any game, but on Tuesday night, a couple of drinks, got myself dragged into it uh, and found myself, um, you know, a healthy debate with uh, with a few of the Wednesday fans about about that you know we've, we've played uh, three games now against difficult opposition so obviously Wigan who are, are down there fighting for their lives Blackburn falling in the same category and then in the middle Birmingham off the back of their first win under their new manager um, uh, you've got these two camps of fans now you've got fans that are saying well nine points from those three games that's all that matters no, nothing else matters it's about getting the points and fans that are saying it's not good enough because i pay my money to go and be entertained so whereabouts are you putting yourselves on that spectrum i want both <laughs> right, fine. there you go yeah. we want we want yeah. everything cake yeah. and eat it please says i first. think I, what, what was that uh, what was that tweet that went out that i disagreed with quite a lot um yeah. The one that was a picture that said, is this the most sensible tweet on Twitter or something like that? Did you remember that one? Did you see it? Yeah, it's like, it's like 10. It was like 10 points, wasn't it? 10, 10 reasons to be cheerful sort of thing, wasn't it? Right, OK, I've got it in front of me now. Results beat performance every time. And I think every time is a hell of a statement to make because 
I've seen us lose and play better than what we played against, for example, Wigan. Uh, you know what I mean? And I, uh, and we have to, we have to come to terms with the fact that football is an entertainment business. It is um, it is a showbiz business. It is it is going to pay money to watch something that you find entertaining. Hence, why we're going. And if we're going to get subjected to Martin Allen long ball style Stuart Gray sit on one goal crap football, then I'm going to get annoyed about it. Uh, you know what I mean that's that um, that's that you know what? covered. <laughs> I'm, I'm... Well, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to heartily disagree with you, Fudge. And this is coming from someone who, yes, who loves entertainment. And to be honest, sometimes if I want entertainment, I'll go and, and do something that I'm not as emotionally invested in. Yeah, or at least not emotionally invested in it year after year, week after week, month after month, day after day. Um, the important thing is that we get the point. That is the simple maths of what we're trying to achieve here. The problem that I have with people who go, it's just points. It doesn't matter what how bad the performances are. It doesn't matter what style of football we play. It doesn't matter who we who does it. It doesn't matter how good the players are, how bad the players are. If we get the points, then we've done our job. The problem that I have with that is that it is such a short-sighted view. Because sooner or later, bad You're performances get from bad players with bad tactics in front of a crowd who isn't behind you. You'll get found out. I saw someone that had, had tweeted, if if you take uh, the form league table, so this is from the middle of November, uh, we are second in that form league table behind only Huddersfield, uh, who've got more points in that period, and we've conceded the fewest goals. Now, people yeah. might talk about bad performances, and Eddie, you talked about you know bad performances, bad players, bad tactics. Is that true, though, when we, you know, we, we, in terms of the form table, we're bang up there, we're in automatic promotion form, and we're not leaking in goals? The form table doesn't lie, and the fact that we haven't conceded goals doesn't lie. So, <laughs> so having sat on the fence, now what I'm saying, is, effectively, is that Wednesday fans who were saying that we've been playing poor are talking shit. They, 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 they're ignoring the fact that the results have still been going our way, and they are deluding themselves that it takes a really good performance to do that. But if you want Wednesday fans to be happy and get behind the team, we better give them those sort of performances because that's what we as football fans expect from a successful football team. Here's a question. Where would you find all of the following in one place? Chairs, tables, beer, Vic, James, more beer, Dick Yow, Eddie, more beer, and the rest of the Wednesday week gang. That's right, it's the Riverside Cafe's new outside bar. All of your favourite lagers, ciders, soft drinks and hand pump ales are now available outside. Come and see the gang and give it a try. The Riverside Cafe's new outside bar, now open on match days. So, all in all, it's um, other than the football, it's been a fairly quiet week, hasn't it, at, uh, at S6? Not a great deal that's been uh, going on. There is, though, a very nice story that's been doing the rounds today, which um, concerns our, well, our record transfer signing, Jordan Rhodes. This is lovely, isn't it? So, um, he's written, and, and it's, it's hard to kind of get across through the, the, the medium of audio, just how sweet this is. You need to see it. He's, he's done a, a handwritten letter to uh, a Middlesbrough fan who asked him why he left the club. And, um, I mean, it's it's just one of those sort of, those awe moments, isn't it? It's so cute. Oh, it's, it, it's a beautiful thing. And you know what? The, the With it being at a time when he had this fan letter from a guy who he didn't have to care about because he, he, he was off to Sheffield Wednesday. The fact that he took time to do a little signed Middlesbrough card to this kid and talk about his time at Middlesbrough and how much he appreciated living up there, being in amongst those people, um, it was beautiful. But the one thing that I found slightly bemusing, and this might be a, you know, a, a Wednesday week poll needed on Twitter or something like that. Um, I'm a 39-year-old man and my handwriting is that of a serial killer. <laughs> Jordan Rhodes has got the handwriting of a really, really pretty 14-year-old girl. Um, <laughs> and so I, so I want to know from, <laughs> from Wednesday week uh, Twitter followers, do you have the handwriting of a serial killer or do you have the handwriting of a really pretty 14-year-old girl? Because um, I'm sure that he must be a real anomaly. 
<laughs> we uh, we need to hire one of those. Uh, you get those people that analyse people's handwriting, don't you? They can tell you everything about them from uh, from their handwriting. We ought to send yeah. it to one of those. I like I like the way that he gets like a dig in a bit. You know what I mean? He gets a bit of a dig in. Like <laughs> I, I love the way he, he, he's, he's gone to the point of, of, of venting his frustrations at Middlesbrough towards this young kid. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> towards, there's a little smoggy there waiting for his, waiting for his card, and he's written off to Jordan Rhodes, and, and it's like, ah, excuse me, Mister Man. He's Dom Housen now. Excuse me, can I have can I have a written card? And he's gone. I really loved it there. Uh, but it weren't my fault. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. oh, all right. You took a backhanded swipe in a letter to a kid there, George. I love it. Good shout. Even, <laughs> even though even though this was a terrible time in my career where even though I was really, really good, I wasn't getting picked. Yeah, stupid. You still, still support look, a stupid club. Yeah, still still, still loved being there, apart from I talk a wanker, the wanker. <laughs> Any, anyway, kid, thanks for supporting me. No, no. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> Ah oh dear. Um, I've got an update for you on um, something that we talked about last week on the podcast. Um, now, do you remember the the story of Ian Tootle, uh, who yes. is uh, the guy who has Everest been demand. yeah he's been diagnosed with cancer, and what he wants to do in his effectively his, his final months is to become the first person with cancer to climb up Everest and of course when when we covered it last week the big kind of talking point really was the fact that a Sheffield United fan had donated a thousand pounds and that meant that he agreed to take a Sheffield United flag with him and plant it at the top of Everest now there's been quite a bit of media coverage about that this this week um the the update this evening I've just had a look as of uh, just a couple of minutes ago and bear in mind that it's less than two weeks since he uh, he started this he's now raised twenty four thousand and forty nine pounds so he is what just under five grand away from his target of twenty nine thousand just over twenty nine thousand pounds and you would think you know with with the way that, that that's been kind of building over the last couple of weeks he's in with a really good shout of raising that amount of money which is absolutely fantastic if there's anyone listening that didn't know about this or maybe just heard about it or think so i read that in the paper i need to, to do something about it if you go on gofundme and search climbing everest for cancer um we donated 20 quid last week anything that you can give help and get towards that target he is a big wednesday fan and um you know he'll, he'll really appreciate that and i'm sure we can we can get him to that target here here you know in the absence of lord hillsborough you need to have a here here that we should pre-record <laughs> the, the good news stories that yeah. we have because yeah. you know, we spend a lot of time we're quite cynical at times especially when it comes to our football rivalries around here but uh, as much as uh, it's great to see a Wednesday fan doing this and it's great to see the Wednesday family rallying around it's fantastic to see the football family of Sheffield and I'm sure plenty of people from further further afield than the Steel City getting involved uh, with this and so serious you know big up to, um, to to the Blades that have been getting involved with this big up to the Owls that are getting involved with it it, it it'd be a fantastic experience for anybody uh, it, it makes it very poignant what's been going on but uh, yeah that's if you if you have something else that you can add to it then you know then please do uh, more big news uh, as as we record this now on Thursday evening now yesterday was a landmark day in the world of music any ideas why that might be yesterday uh, Bus busted's new album went platinum close uh... It was the day that Royston Drenther released his debut single, which is called Paranoid, uh, sorry, Paranoia, um, although I think that must be lost in translation because I think it's supposed to be called Fucking Shite. Um, and... <laughs> He, he uh, if, if you've not, I'm kind of loath to play a clip of this song because it's, you know, we, we kind of like to, you know, to kind of hate stuff, don't we? That's human nature. H having listened to all of this song from beginning to end, I can confirm it is absolutely terrible. I mean, awful, just terrible. Is it is it because you're not obviously a hip hop fan, James? Or is it literally just because it's crap? It is because it is awful awful if you if you haven't listened to this you you need to you can find it on um on on youtube it's actually been released under um 
uh, a different name, and I'm trying to find it now. Actually, uh, is it, isn't I'm, it? Isn't I'm it? Roya Roya Two Faces. That's it. Yes. Yeah. So whether that's his I, rap name. I, I I think it's supposed to be kind of like Royal Faces, but look quite funny by putting a two instead of an L. Ah, right. So okay. it looks. You know, it's apparently it's clever. It's not clever, Royston. It's not clever, and your song's rubbish. Um, it, it you look if you've not listened to it, just you know, when you finish listening to the podcast look it up on youtube and i'll apologize in advance because it's three minutes of your life that you won't get back but at least then you'll be able to go yeah he was right it is shite <laughs> i'm just uh, i'm just tweeting the link right now from the uh, from the wednesday week account so uh <laughs> we, my we favorite apologize bit is when, you in actually, advance. when you get on the link and you've you've looked at, it's clearly had a serious impact on the listening public because it has two comments on youtube <laughs> i've posted videos of my uh, at the time uh, 14 month old son singing twinkle twinkle little star and it has had more comments than uh, <laughs> royale faces paranoia um with the, the new video and i'm pretty sure the production quality was higher on my home movie as well but uh you know, big up Royston. Do what you want to do. Do what, <laughs> what what you're passionate about. You know, some people are passionate about music. Some people are passionate about art. Some people, Vance Sasso is passionate about being the best human who ever lived. So we've all got a calling in life. Now, Royston, rap is not your calling. And to be honest, I think Lord Hillsborough is probably closer to having rap as his calling than you. But uh, you know what? I feel you, bro. Keep on doing what you do. <laughs> I want to know what's more embarrassing. Is it Royston Drenthe, Royal Two Faces and Paranoia, or is it Arsenal Fan TV? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because That's I, another TWW cast poll right there, isn't it? That is that yeah, that is that is incredible. That I mean that is that is something to watch. That it's it's the way that the guy just stands there just getting people on these big long rants. And he just stands there taking it because it sounds like he's talk they're talking to him. Like, you get me? I told you last week, yeah, I told you at sea, we're not gonna come away with nothing, blood. Nothing. And like the geese has just stood there just absolutely motionless, like somebody's just shut him down. So come on, Wednesday fans, up your bloody game. We need some morons to talk to outside Charlie Brown's where James is normally asleep in the car park. If you can go and meet him there, uh we we've got fluffy mics as well, we've got muffs, so uh come out. And if there's any nutters out there that are a lot like fam and blood and geezer that are on there, come and give us a shout and uh, we'll, we'll turn you into an internet celebrity by the looks of it. Whether you're celebrating a birthday, a wedding or anniversary, maybe you've passed your driving test or you've landed a new job. Well, whatever your reason for a party, the Riverside Cafe is the perfect location on Catch Bar Lane overlooking Hillsborough Stadium. To inquire about hiring us for your function, call 07989 856 054 or Odable 14 232 6121. So something um, something very rare is happening this weekend, boys, that's not happened for a number of weeks. And uh, you'd be forgiven for forgetting what it feels like. It's a Saturday, three o'clock kickoff for Sheffield Wednesday. I think it's... <laughs> I think it's only our second of 2017. Uh, the first, the Robin, first being I hate, I hate the way, way football's changed recently. <laughs> well, come on. We know, look, we're traditionalists around here. We want Friday 7.45 p.m. kickoff. <laughs> no one watches football on a Saturday <laughs> afternoon. It's ridiculous. <laughs> bloody sky. Bloody beach bloody sport. Bloody, bloody rubbish. Bloody rubbish. It's going to be quite strange for me because after a few games where it's been kind of a rush to get there after work, so I've not been able to drink enough to um, forget everything Enjoy about it. the game. I've actually, <laughs> I've actually remembered things. It's a weird experience. Um, so we've got Forest on Saturday. Now they've, let's be fair, Forest have had an awful season, haven't they? It's been a terrible season for Forest. They've um, they've lost a couple of their best players. Uh, Lansbury obviously went in January. They still don't really have kind of a, a manager there, do they? I think it's all all a bit up in the air. And is this three points there for the taking? Yeah, I think I think it is. I think it's uh, I think it, on paper it's an easy three points, but you, you never know as far as some 
some teams go. They can have a be they can have an absolute stinker, and I'm sure we'll agree that the Wednesday way is to lose against the team that is having an absolute stinker, or be the team that spring but springboards their season into uh, into the better realms. Do you know what I mean? So yes, they've lost some key players. However, they've uh, given Gary Brazil the um, the job till the end of the season so something might change something might happen and I've uh, I've just remembered actually while I was waste gashed on Tuesday night I got a message from Forest Fan TV asking me if I wanted to be on the podcast again of theirs and I've just remembered I've not replied so uh, oh. if you just bear with me 30 seconds right, I'll, now, uh, I'll get back on that. <laughs> now's, your, now's your chance mate you find it reply now live on air it'll be fine they listen to it podcasts listen to each other don't they yeah, 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 yeah. I can't, can't, can't move for, on my phone for the Barnet podcast. Yeah, I can't get enough of that. <laughs> uh, you know what? For, Forest, they're shipping some goals, aren't they, at the moment? So it should be a rich hunting ground for, for Sheffield Wednesday and our multi-million pound strike force. So I can confidently predict a 1-0 victory with a goal from Van Son Sasso. <laughs> he uh, it sounds like Tom Lees is, is not going to be back so it looks like um, old Vinny will be continuing also looks like Gary Hooper is uh, is, is, is not going to be up to match fitness either so um, do you think we'll see uh, Fernando back in the uh, in the starting 11 Ooh, so, is... do, do people think gentlemen over the last two Ooh. games do you think we've got moody teenage Fernando back again because he yes. seems to have a little bit of the arse on, doesn't he, again now? Is that yes. going to affect us? I think I think what, what we've got with Fernando is uh, echoes of what happened to him at Watford. Now, he was their top boy at Watford. He was their best striker, just like he was before we signed Willow and Rhodes and then put them up front together and then spanked somebody 3-0. And so what happened is, Nando, you're going to go out on the left-hand side, but he's just not got... The he's not defensive minded enough to play on the left hand side of a four four two. If we were playing that four five one with the attacking wingers, fine. You know what I mean? I think he fits in that really well, and he has filled that role a few a fair few times in the few years he's been with us. But um, in a four four two, he 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 doesn't fit in. And I think what's happening is I think he's going. Hang on a minute. I've been pushed down the pecking order a little bit here. Um, this it, it, it's happening again, Mum. It's happening. I want to come home to bloody Italy, innit? You know what I mean? And I, I, and I think this is this is what's creeping in. He likes being the show pony. He likes being the star man, and he isn't anymore. And um, given his contract dispute at the beginning of the season, and given the way he sat there and the way he went off against uh, the way he hilariously went off against uh, against Birmingham. Uh, I think, yes, we have. I think we've got a Mardi teenager on our hands right now who doesn't realise that unless he starts pulling his weight, he's going to be out on his ass. Could that be a good I thing, think... though? Does that does that mean that he's he's really yeah. got something to prove at the moment? That, um, you know, when he gets that, that opportunity, that he'll, um, he'll, he'll really take it? I say there's a bit of tough love needed here. And... He's not he's not been unfamiliar with Tough Love, has he? With the things that have um, reportedly happened between him and the chairman um, around his attitude, etc. in the past. And uh, you know what? I think Fernando needs to understand that, yes, Wednesday fans have... A, we have a deep and abiding desire to find a new subject of our affection who can match, um, you know, uh, peace beyond his name, David Hurst. Um, and we've been looking for that for 20 years, right? Fernando kind of last season approached that, and we've had a few players who've done that in the past. Fernando approached that level of adulation. But actually, we're a very practical bunch. We're a very prosaic bunch as Wednesday fans. What we actually want is a player who's going to deliver, who's going to deliver 20-plus goals a season. And for all of the false dawns and for all of the great uh, performances and for all of the uh, one man teams that we've had. Um, and Fernando has been part of that. He's been fantastic. I think he needs to understand that what, what we would dearly love for him to be is a cog in a great machine, as opposed to being the entire machine itself. And I love the idea of him really becoming uh, that, you know, that kind of dangerous threat from out wide that we know that he can do. And not many of the players that we've got can uh, can achieve um what i fear is that fernando if he doesn't 
play through the middle now or play behind two strikers as the, the fulcrum of the team and the guy where all, all the attention's on, I think he's going to see his ass and get a bit moody. I really hope that he doesn't <laughs> because uh, because we've got, you know, he he could make himself an absolute legend. He could be the guy that pulls the strings. He could become not David Hurst, which I think he's been uh, be, be desperately trying to be for the last 12 months. He could be John Sheridan or he could be Chris Waddle. He could be the guy who who made it all happen for a Jordan Rhodes or a Sam Winnell or a Gary Hooper or a, a you know or a Stephen Fletcher. So I think maybe he needs to modify what his expectations are as far as the way that we play and where he fits in the team. Um, I'd love to see that bit of humility. I'd love to see him take a, a leaf out of Jose Semedo's book and go, you know what? I'm here as part of something great. And if I if I give it my all, I can be the guy firing the bullets. as a uh, The guy providing the ammunition rather than the guy that's firing the bullets. Um, will we get that? I don't know. I still I, think he's a, he's a bit of an arse sometimes, isn't he? <laughs> uh, but man, we, we did go through that period, didn't we, where he was out and we played quite poorly and we missed him. But this is this is pre-JR, as um, as Lord H put it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? This is this is before we signed every striker in the championship. So, um, you know, uh, there has to be a, a shift of power. There has to be a, a shift of, you know, a, as new players come in, you drop down the list and some hit the bottom and some, you know, fight the way back up. I don't think Fernando is the type of person who's very good at get, receiving tough love and getting told. I think he needs adulation. I think he needs love and I think he needs to play football. Um, I, I don't know if we can keep him happy anymore, if that makes sense. I, I don't know if, if we are the club now for him and I'm not saying ship him out I'd love to keep him I think he's a, a cracking player I really do but what's worse having a good player on the uh, having a good player that we're not playing or having a um a unhappy player in the changing room uh, do you know what I mean bloody hell fudge I only asked whether or not you'd play him on Saturday you've just gone and sold him <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say I've I've gone a long way there, aren't I? I'm, I'm not selling him. I'm not selling him. I'm just saying that uh, if he's not getting a decent crack of the whip, I think he needs to. Um, we need to take a look at it, if that makes sense. But th that's months away, and I'm uh, and I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, well, he'll he'll go out on Saturday. He'll score a hat trick now. Watch him. Yeah, that's, fine. He's the best player. Ever. David Hurst. Um, so it's it's another uh, it's another double week as well because we've got a game on Tuesday, a rearranged game. This is our game in hand, isn't it? In the uh, in the uh, in the championship season, uh, which is against Brentford at Hillsborough next Saturday, which is uh, certainly a game that I always look forward to. The boys from London coming up should be uh, should be a good evening that one. Um, and you know, in theory, let's go on the theory that whatever Norwich do on. Um, on Saturday that, that we do the same so this would be our chance to open up a serious gap in sixth if we can win our game in hand I mean potentially be looking at possibly even a seven point gap that we could have by um, by 10 o'clock on um, on Tuesday night um, so yeah two big games coming up in the next few days got to be six points well, I think we we kind of talked about this, didn't we, last week, where uh, if we're serious about putting a real challenge together, we we kind of have to go maximum, 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 don't we? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, we've got uh, slightly further down the line, we've got to go away to Ellen Road, we've got to host Norwich City, we've got to go away to Villa Park, and we've got to host Reading. Um, you know, this is... That, that's the part of the season where... The, the good teams, the teams that are going to be there at the end, really show themselves. We've been really fortunate in that we've had a run of games ahead of this that are all eminently winnable. And guess what? We've won them all apart from one. Um, we need three points is an essential on Saturday. Three points is probably essential on Tuesday, although I do like Brentford as a team uh, and I think they'll probably cause us problems. If we can get away with a scrappy 2-1 win like we did against uh, Blackburn on Tuesday, I will be more than happy with that. Let's try and build. Let's try and get to the point where 
we're really confident going into that Leeds game. We're really confident going to the game against Norwich. And, and then, you know, then we're into the running and we'll see what happens. But um, I think psychologically, it will be huge for us to take another six points. We don't know what Huddersfield and Leeds and Reading are going to do in the interim. Um, you know, we've got a game in hand over Reading and Leeds. We don't have one over Huddersfield. Huddersfield are flying at the moment, let's not forget. But I would love to think that we could close February out by getting a victory at Ellen Road, which will put us comfortably above Leeds uh, and really right up there with wherever Huddersfield and Reading are. And then if we're there, like I said last week, if we're in pole position waiting for one of Newcastle or Brighton to slip up, because actually I believe that they have it in their power to to, to really to slip up and, and, and drop those points, then who knows what can happen. But it really hinges on these three games to close out February. So I'll be looking for the, the goals, but the performance as well, because that you know, eventually, as I said, our luck will run out if we don't start putting good performances together. So... Yeah, let's see. Let's see these two games um, and, and then sing our hearts out against Leeds. Absolutely. Thank you, boys. Um, either of you have any other bits for us this evening? Um, I do. I, uh, I've i been on Twitter today and I've been kind of catching up since I've been away. And um, there is a, uh, a young lady, a writer, Laura Jones. Uh, her Twitter handle is uh, an anagram yes at all and i think it stands for yes i can explain the offside rule taking a swipe at her male counterparts which i find quite funny um and she she has been asked by 442 to write a an article on the worst sheffield wednesday player ever and the debate that she opened this to twitter and the debate that's that, that's you know that's ensued has been has been amazing and i think currently jay bothroyd is winning this and, uh, and I think the debate is um, what makes him a, the worst player because we have had, and what became apparent is we have had some dross play for us. And I think the first person I thought of when I saw this was Dan Stefanovic because I don't understand how he carried on a career in the Premier League long after we'd gone. I found that incredible. I thought he had the turning circle of a tractor. Um, and, but uh, somebody else suggested Bothroyd and I thought for us, he was... You know, dreadful. I mean, really, very bad. Uh, but it depends on your criteria of what you see as a a, a bad player for, to be the worst player. So, I'm going to ask you, chaps. What do you think? What do you? What would you? If you were to, I think, name one of your top three uh, worst players to put on a Sheffield Wednesday shirt. It's it's interesting this, isn't it? Because um, Andy did a, a blog for our website along these kind of lines, where he picked yeah. out kind of the worst the worst players, and, and, and yes. you know, that brought back some awful memories for a lot of people, didn't it? <laughs> players that we kind of forgotten about and and ignored, uh, and reminded us just some of the, the the absolute the absolute crap that we've had. I've got to be dead honest. Out of all those players on that list. Uh, and, and it, you know, if you've been on the website, you'll notice this because I, I kind of manage all the blog section and stuff like that. You've got to pick like a display picture, a featured picture, which becomes the main picture in the blog. And I picked Jay Bothroyd as the, the featured <laughs> picture for that article because he, he is who I would choose as. I don't know if I'd say he's necessarily, you know, absolutely the worst, but in terms of the most disappointing, in terms of ratio to of, of what he delivered against what yes. we expected at that time. He he's the worst in that regard. Because I, I think this is what the interesting thing is. A lot of people have suggested people like Ola Tidman, David Graham, Scott Oakes, Adam Porrick, Kim El Kim Olsen, uh, Gilles De Builder, Patrick Blondo. You know what I mean? These are these are players that were shit. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> these these are players that were that were bad. But it depends on what your criteria is of what creates a terrible player. Yep. So is it, you know, there, like you said, there is a sense, Bothroyd, a real sense of underwhelming clout, you know, underwhelmingness, if that's a thing that just kind of sort of swells over the top of you. So what about you, Eddie? Is there anybody that, that sticks out? Have you got a couple of couple of people it's, there? Yeah, you know, it's, and for me, it's about how it, how it ripped my heart out seeing... It's, those players perform the way they did for the team that I loved. And so, you know, I, we've got, you know, your Guy Branstons and your John Bezwethericks and your Dean Smiths and these guys. And you know what? They were, they were really journeyman football players. Still, 
infinitely better than I could ever dream of being. I would trade everything I've been, everything I've done, everything I have for the chance to just turn out once in the blue and white stripes. But I think for me, it was the players that we signed that take that took us from being a top six Premier League team to a team that got relegated. Yes. It, yeah, the, the, and, those ones and, hurt. They're the ones that hurt. And you know what? Dejan Stefanovic is a really, really good football player. And he's shown it. He's shown it for, for different players, uh, for different players, for different teams. Um, but it but it hurt seeing how, how bad a player could be in the blue and white stripes when we were expecting, uh, you know, a Des Walker or a Nigel Pearson or a Peter Shirtliff, that, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah. um, I, you know, I, I don't know. For me... It, it was the attitude, the disrespect of the club and the fans and the badge and the history. And honestly, I can't I can't get past Jay Bothroyd for that because he literally stuck two fingers up at every Wednesday fan with his attitude and his performances. And he was unlucky enough that he was in the uh, an era where there was social media and there was that feedback. And he was basically a full weight dickhead. Um, and so, for me, <laughs> it's, prob it's probably got to be Jay. But actually, it, uh, my anger really lies at the door of the managers and the board and the chairman um, of the time that sanctioned the, the, the players in the mid and late 90s that ended up seeing Wednesday relegated out of our rightful place in the top division. So, you know what? My worst ever Wednesday player is probably Dave Richards. But... <laughs> he never he, he never set foot on the pitch. So um, yeah, there you go. Bit of politics. Those of you that know me from a long time ago probably know I could rant about that <laughs> all night, and I've put a lot of that behind me. But um, but there you go. I don't blame any player at the end of the day. I blame the people that sign those players. So uh, yeah, so there it is. Yeah, we're in a better place now, luckily. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was a building block of us getting better. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, have you got any bits for us? Um, just a, a really short one. It's a personal one. Um, Vic and Rich uh, are not with us tonight, and I know that they they kind of feel the same way. Um, a, a real good close friend of uh, of ours, um, who a lot of Wednesday fans that are listening to this will know, Nigel Short, Grandad on Al's talk, um, uh, N Short on uh, on Twitter, etc. He's about. He's like he, we talk about players who who don't respect the team and the history, etc. Nigel is pretty much your cookie cutter, perfect Wednesday. I follows the team through thick and thin. Um, you know, he's he, he's he's been. He was the the chairman of Wednesday. I he's been involved with the supporters' trusts and the shareholders' associations through all his year. Um, he's a Wednesday fan because of his dad. Uh, his dad, uh, you know, long times uh, followed the Owls forever. He worked at the club. Um, and uh, re uh, really sad that at the back end of January, um, Nigel's dad uh, sadly passed away at the age of 80. Uh, and it was the funeral today. And I know there was a huge turnout for it. Uh, Nigel put some really, really nice words on social media talking about uh, about his dad as a person um, and his dad uh, being a, a proper Wednesday eye and, a, and a, a proper person that wanted everything to be done right. Um, and I think that, that, you know, that's something that we can all aspire to i think we all want the right thing for our club for the right reasons and uh yeah you know so so jeffrey short um rest in peace we uh we send our condolences to nigel and the rest of the family um but really on a wider thing as wednesday fans he is everything we should aspire to as a you know as a lifelong fan being part of it getting involved as much as you can and understand that it isn't always you know, roses on the pitch. Sometimes it's cushions getting thrown onto the pitch from the north stand, uh, but we stick with them, and we know that we're in it for a for a greater good. So, uh, yeah, uh, uh, on a very personal level, um, I think we, you know, I, I've had I've had pause to think about things this week, and uh, and actually, we're in a pretty damn good place as Sheffield Wednesday fans right now. So, uh, in amongst a lot of the. The, the kind of moaning and the the saloon bar moanings to coin a phrase of what's been going on recently uh, on the pitch let's uh, let's take stock and understand that we're an awful lot better than the Jay Bothroyd years we're an awful lot better than what a lot of us have been through for the last 20 years and actually we're all we're all Wednesday aren't we um let's let's try and get that positivity back because this is the business part of the season where 
we should all be really pulling in the same direction. Um, and I think I think Nigel would back this up that uh, you know his dad would really uh, would really have been part of that feeling that even when we've be, been beaten down long enough that there's always light at the end of the tunnel and it isn't always that oncoming train. Well said, well said. Um, so don't forget if you haven't already, there are um, there are a couple of competitions that we've got going on. Um, if you uh, want to win some Wednesday goodies, head on over to our Facebook page. On our website, thewednesdayweek.co.uk, there's a, a Road 17, brand new Road 17 shirt that you can win. We've also got a new blog incoming on Friday from an all new blogger. Uh, if you want to check that out on the website as well. And quick shout out as well to Jim, who's one of our writers. He wrote a, a blog for us a couple of weeks ago in the in the last few days as he prepared for uh, for parenthood for fatherhood well uh, harriet was uh, born this week and a uh, lovely photo of harriet on twitter as well so congratulations to jim and his other half right fudge if people want to get hold of you how would they go about doing so i'm available on twitter at dan fudge um yeah uh, probably you know normally i've got a gag here but i'm uh, i'm bereft as it stands i've been away you have to bear with me <laughs> Eddie, where, whereabouts are you on the uh, on the Twitterage? So, as always, at Sausage Arms on Twitter and also Instagram. Uh, Forest on Saturday. We're uh, we're all doing that, aren't we? Are you actually going? Yeah, hundred percent. Wow. Of course, I ain't I ain't letting those priority points go to waste. Um, so yeah, we uh, we don't have a plan yet. James, do, uh, do you have a plan that you can announce to the the Wednesday week? Uh, world to enable them to come and rub shoulders with oh. us and possibly also genitals well a, a rough plan uh, which is that we um, I, I'm used to that we uh, land into Nottingham at somewhere around half past ten and I think we'll probably just go and quickly get a bite to eat somewhere so we'll be hitting the the pub route at uh, about 11 half 11 something like that what we where we normally end up going is I believe it's the oldest pub in the UK which is the old trip to Jerusalem which we call the cave pub because when you go inside it's just kind of some tables built into some rocks uh, but great pub however you don't get any mobile reception in there so uh, if you are heading there and you're going to tweet me or anything to ask if we're there then I probably won't reply because I won't be able to get it but I imagine that's where we're going to be heading perfect well look so I, I think we can commit to giving uh, a little bit of status updates as we we get closer to each other and uh, that, that sounds weird uh, and closer to wherever we're heading uh, and then if we suddenly just go radio silence you'll know that's where that's, we are that's where um, we are and if not if if james uh, tweets from hooters then you know that something has gone horrifically horrifically oh, wrong seriously wrong for that to happen <laughs> it really it really would be um if you do want to uh, follow my progress on uh, saturday and whether i do get drunk enough to go to hooters uh, i am on twitter at james marriott you can follow the podcast at twwcast um and if you want to get in touch with us do it via our, our spanking new website thewednesdayweek.co.uk you can uh, drop an email to any of the uh, the gang through the website and you can find all our twitter profiles on there as well that's the wednesdayweek.co.uk that brings us to an end for this week's podcast and we will see you in a week stay stay strong stay safe and we will see you real real soon <laughs>